Good morning. Happy Easter. Here we are in uh, Simcoe Street United Church in Oshawa, and this is Easter Sunday, April 12th, 2020. Good to be joining with you in this time of worship as we celebrate the risen Christ and our life in Him. Just before we begin the service, a few uh, announcements, if you will. Uh, at the close of the service, we invite you to uh, uh, stick around for a second and have uh, our virtual coffee hour, or coffee minute as we're calling it. And uh, it's good just to uh, uh, keep in touch with everybody. And, and uh, if you want to be part of that in weeks going forward, please just send a short clip, 15, 20, 30 seconds, just saying hello and uh, whatever greeting comes to mind. Send that to Gord and uh, he'll include it here at the end of the uh, services each week. This week has seen a significant uh, increase in the uh, response to COVID-19 as we've seen across the nation and indeed across the world. It has meant a significant increase to the work being done here at Simcoe Street United Church. The Backdoor Mission has become the focal agency in a multi-agency interdisciplinary response to those who are at the greatest need in our community. The homeless, the at-risk population, those who struggle with mental health issues, those who struggle with uh, addictions are uh, finding this to be an anchor for them each and every day. It's open every day from 8.30 in the morning till 11 as people need access to washrooms as everything else is closed. They're busy in the basement of Memorial Hall putting in shower stalls and laundry facilities. This looks like it's going to be a long haul kind of a thing. It's not a, uh, a flash in the pan. And so these needs to uh, address those needs of the very vulnerable in our community are going to be needed for a long time. So that is increasing as well. We've got a number of volunteers, but uh, there's always room for more as those who are here on the front lines are, well, we don't want them to get overtired and drawn out because then of course, as we know, if you get tired, that's when your uh, resistance can be depleted. So if you have good health and you're under the age of 55 and you've got a time where you can help as a volunteer contact the backdoor mission and uh, they'll put you to work I'm sure. The costs of running a church also keep on going even though everything else is closed down and uh, if you feel that you can manage to uh, support us in this time and, and ongoing uh, please do so you can use the help button on our a website or you can donate through uh, Canada Helps or you can send in uh, checks that will be deposited each week and of course there's uh, the options of uh, e-transfers and the PAR. Now let us prepare ourselves for worship. This is the season of Easter, the celebration of resurrection the festival of hope, the promise of new beginnings, the dance of faith, the song of joy, the music of gladness, the hymn of love. Let us worship our life-giving God. Let us join together in prayer. God of power, God of people, you are the life of all that lives energy that fills the earth, vitality that brings to birth, impetus in making whole whatever is bruised or broken. In you we grow to know the truth that sets all creation free. You are the song the whole earth sings, the promise liberation brings now and forever. Hear us as we join our voices together in the prayer that you have taught us, our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let's join together in singing our first hymn, number 155 in the hymn book, and we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. fill us with new life and bring us out from this time of isolation alive again in you in jesus name we pray amen the gospel according to john this is in the 20th chapter the first 18 verses early on the first day of the week while it was still dark mary magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. 
At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Thanks be to the Lord for this word. Let us listen to Anna as she sings, I know that my Redeemer liveth.
Oh, that story from John's Gospel. It's got all the details there. It just uh, resonates something very peculiar, very uh, uh, mystical and happy at the same time. And, and yet there is a, a sense of mystery about it. In this time, I can't help but noticing the, the last part of the passage where uh, Jesus uh, insisted to Mary that they practice proper social distancing. Um, something that uh, we're just now beginning to understand the depths of. Don't touch me, you've got to wait, stay apart, that uh, this is um, necessity for life. And uh, it was something that, uh, that changed her focus on what she had just witnessed. It changed her understanding of, of uh, all the things that had come up to that point in her life and into the life of the disciples for sure. And it was a, uh, a time of opening up and broadening of her perspective. I think that's something we need. And the story of Easter is, is very much that kind of a story, isn't it? It's, it's the, the kind of story that asks us to shift our focus. When Mary went to the tomb that morning, she was going early. Why she went early, it, it isn't said. Uh, but there she is, still dark. A time of the day when it, it's quiet, you can hear uh, birds starting to sing, you can hear... Uh, if there's water about, you can hear frogs. It is a, a time that's generally quiet. Most people are still asleep. And she goes down to the tomb, and it is a, uh, a difficult time for her. She's going there in grief. She's going there to do the things that she couldn't do because of circumstance before. She was going to go and prepare Jesus' body properly for the proper burial that was to come. And finds that she can't. We're living in that kind of a, of a time right now where uh, people are having loved ones pass away, often in nursing homes or in a hospital, and they can't be there. And they can't do anything. They have to wait. And it's difficult. I think we can really understand the depth of Mary's grief as she goes to do this thing and, and finds she can't. Now, whether she anticipated the stone being there and having to get helpers to roll it away, the, the scripture passage doesn't say. Uh, she must have assumed something along those lines because it was a surprise first to see the stone rolled away and she assumed, and, and that's a critical piece in all of this, she assumed that his body had been removed. She didn't go in, she didn't verify that in any way, she just assumed that that was the case. Because that's what happens, isn't it? Somebody dies and their body lays there until somebody uh, else comes and moves it. And so she was surprised. The scripture tells us that she did the first thing that came to her mind, which was to uh, run and get help, get help from those who were closest to Jesus, closest to her. She ran to get them and they ran to see what had gone on and they, they got there and uh, the first disciple to arrive, never named, which is the oddest thing about John's gospel, he has this character that never gets named in the entire narrative, always as the other disciple, gets there first and whether John was somebody who wasn't good with names or whether this was some mystery that those who knew him would understand, but it's the puzzle in this whole piece. The other disciple gets there first, but doesn't go in. We don't know why. But it's Peter, the bold one, charges right into the, into the tomb and finds something bizarre. He finds the, the grave clothes wrapped up in one place and the thing that was around Jesus' head in another. As if 
Jesus had gotten undressed, had taken off the burial clothes, had gotten undressed. And he did not know what that meant. The other disciple, we're told, then comes in and sees, and he believes. What does he believe? I think that's the central thing about this whole story is what is it that he believes and that Mary Magdalene then believes and then goes from them to the other disciples and eventually spreads out across time and history. He believes what Jesus had told them before. He believes these stories about the prophets, that this all had to happen, that he would die, but then he would be raised up. That he was going to be alive again. And this was to demonstrate who he was in essence. I think in our current situation, we have a tendency to kind of focus on the wrong things too. Um, Mary focused on the tomb being empty. Peter focused on the grave clothes being uh, oddly rolled up. But they didn't really understand what that was all about. We, in this particular time, I think we kind of get focused on, on the wrong things. We get focused on our limitations. We get focused on uh, all of these horrific things statistics that keep getting drummed into us day after day. So many more COVID cases, so many more deaths, so much more limitation on what we can do. The economy's tanking, people are unemployed. We get all focused on that. And we need to get our focus shifted a little bit. There are some incredible stories about how this uh, challenge for us as human beings is a, an incredible boon to the creation that we live alongside of. We're seeing all sorts of stories of animals uh, coming out of hiding and, and walking in the streets of cities around the world. We're hearing stories of, of places where there's blue sky where they haven't had it in it decade. We've heard about uh, people being able to see fish swimming in the canals of Venice. Nobody remembers seeing that ever before, whether they were there all along and just couldn't be seen or whether they've returned. We are seeing images of the decrease in uh, greenhouse gas emissions the world over and the smog levels are reducing to levels that we have not seen in a generation. There is this amazing resurgence planet-wide. Even at the time when we feel so put upon as one of the animals of this earth. It is becoming a, an odd kind of uh, a misstep, if you will, with humanity and the rest of the world where we live. It was that kind of a thing that the disciples were experiencing with Jesus on that first Sunday, that first Easter, as that what they expected the world to work like uh, wasn't working that way. It was disrupted somehow in a way that they didn't yet understand. It was uh, something that was unprepared for, unseen. Sound familiar? A little bit, I think. And they didn't know what it was going to mean. Historically, we can look back on it, and we know that there was this uh, an initial exuberance uh, among the disciples. And we'll get to that. Maybe by the time we get to that, we'll be at that point of uh, exuberance of, of coming out of this time of, of social isolation. It was uh, 50 days later on, on Pentecost and uh, looking at timelines in, in other countries, uh, we kind of can see that maybe that's about a reasonable timeline uh, 
for us. But at the initial stages, it, it, it was kind of puzzling. What does this mean? What did the stone being rolled away mean? What did the garments being distributed oddly mean? What did Mary's encounter with the risen Christ mean? For Mary, that encounter was life-changing. She became the first of the apostles, the first to carry the word of the risen Lord into the world, the first one to witness his uh, life-giving presence. And yet it was an, in that point of the deepest of grief that she came to recognize him. It was when all the other things that she could kind of counted on were all gone, when she was at her lowest point, that she looks up and recognizes the one who is before her, really for the first time. So, Easter Sunday, a time of knowing that what the Lord has in store for us is, is, is marvelous that we are in a time of uh, struggle right now and uh, across the whole planet. But our struggle, remember, is uh, a lessening of struggle for other creatures, for the planet, even, as we see this uh, resurgence to life. The decor here in the sanctuary today, uh, flowers, and we see that happening in our gardens. Every spring we see this happen. We know the promise. It's there every year. Uh, and yet sometimes we forget about it, don't we? We, we kind of get focused on all the wrong things. And we need to uh, be encouraged and uh, get our vision shifted a little bit. Away from the negative and the, the troubling to the glorious and wonderful things. I hope you have a good Easter. It's certainly going to be different. I know we're used to having the whole family around the table, you know, lots to eat and lots of laughter. Uh, we're probably going to do that on house party or Zoom or something like that this year. Uh, but it's, uh, it's still, even though we're physically separated, uh, we're in good company. We're in good company of good people, good joy, and uh, have, a, have a happy Easter. And know that even though we are alone, we are not alone. We are never alone. And we are all in this together, moving forward to new fullness of life. Thanks be to God. Let us join together now in singing our next hymn, which is uh, 179 in Voices United. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks.
Let us join our hearts and our minds in prayer. Through fear-filled days and aching nights, when the powers of death have done their worst, your love has never deserted us. Even when we are isolated from our closest friends and family, you are with us. Your presence never fails us. Your gifts of hope and new life transform us. We praise you for Jesus Christ, risen to life, eternal as your love. With the women at the tomb, we raise the strain of gladness. Hallelujah. Life is stronger than death. The day of resurrection has come, scattering fear and gloom. In Jesus, God incarnate, the risen Christ who joins us together as a community of broken but hopeful believers, loving what he loved, living what he taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and place. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. Well, let us join together now in singing our closing hymn today, which is number 173 in Voices United, Thine is the Glory. together in our coffee minute as we hear from uh, those in the congregation who've sent in little video clips and please do so yourself. Happy Easter from our family to yours. Hi everyone, this is this is Tim Brosco from the Brosco family. I hope everyone's doing well 
and staying safe during this COVID-19 pandemic. We will get through this together. We'll see you all soon. Bye. Hey everybody, Jeff and Cheryl saying hi from Whitby. Hope everybody's having a great Easter weekend. We're good. Hope you're all good. We'll see you all again when this is all over. Have a happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Hey everyone from the Broscos. Hope everyone is staying well. Thank you, David, for your message this morning. Thank you also to Jennifer, Andy, Susie, Bob and Diane. It was great to hear your singing. Take care, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, church family. Uh, it's Leah and Violet here. We're just checking in with everybody and wishing everybody a happy Easter. And we miss you guys, and we hope everybody is well and safe. Hi. You say hi. Hi. I hope you have great days with your church, and I love you guys. I hope the church is still fine. Happy Easter. <laughs> Bye. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you and keep you. You are risen with Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.